Welcome back to another Sunday walk video. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about three different things. Number one, of course, I'm gonna talk about Bitcoin. What is going on with Bitcoin? So that's number one. Number two, spot ETFs. I'm sure you guys all heard of the numerous spot ETFs and the rumors, are they actually coming as soon as tomorrow? And what's gonna happen afterwards? So that's number two. Number three, what's going on with the alts? I know a lot of you guys are wondering, man, why are the alts dumping so much? Should I load up more now or should I wait? Or should I load up more on Bitcoin? I'm gonna answer all these questions today. In case you're wondering, yes, I'm walking around this Sunday in a t-shirt, barefoot in my court because it is dark, snowy, and cold outside. But I'm gonna walk in circles and circles and circles until I get done with everything I want to say. All right, so what's going on with Bitcoin, first of all? Bitcoin is strong as ever. It's holding right around 44,000, right? This past week, we saw a couple of nasty drops. I call them fake outs or shake outs more specifically. And we saw, we saw Bitcoin drop down about 10%. Well, actually, maybe a little bit more than 10%. From 45,000 all the way down to 40,000. Then we came back up. Then it fell again. And we came back up. And now we're at around 44,000. So, I mean, we're still holding really well right now. So we're bouncing between us like 44.2 and like 43.7-ish. But Bitcoin is holding strong. Right now, all the metrics is showing Bitcoin is in a really good spot. I mean, nothing has changed fundamentally, right? So Bitcoin, I believe going forward will get stronger, obviously. Okay, uh, Bitcoin dominance, that's the interesting thing. Bitcoin dominance may go up. So we haven't seen this for a while. We've gotten used to like this mini altcoin season and that may be over because ever since I would say October of 2023 till now, we've been seeing the altcoins come up in a big way. Obviously, Bitcoin has come up, but altcoins specifically had made huge runs, okay, from October till now. So we know, based on history, that true altcoin season comes at the tail end of every cycle. If you go to any of these charts, the ones I show you, and you go all, you zoom out, and you look at the all time frame, you'll realize that most of them did a 10x or a 20x or a 100x within a matter of a few months, right at the end of 2021. And if you look, 2017 is the same thing. And in 2017, we also saw the same thing. So true all coin season comes at the very tail end of a four year cycle. But in between, we have a lot of mini altcoin seasons. And I do believe that whatever we saw between October and now was one of them. Do I believe that it's going to be over? Not necessarily, but even though alts will continue to trend upwards, they may get weaker against Bitcoin because we know that there's a major catalyst coming. There's several major catalysts coming. And they can drive so much money into Bitcoin. So even though the entire market will go up and Bitcoin will go up and alts will go up, Bitcoin may be leading the way. Don't know yet exactly because this cycle has not been the same as previous cycles, right? Alts are a lot stronger. We came up faster. The recovery was sooner than expected. So who's to say that this mini altcoin season is truly over? We don't know yet, but we will know soon. We will know soon because we have two major catalysts coming up. And if they cause Bitcoin to start spiking in a major way and all the money is flowing to Bitcoin, guess where they're coming from? Well, from the outside and internally, they're going to come from the alts, right? So I've said this before on air, and I'll say it again. If you look at previous cycles, there has been times where Bitcoin has been so strong, so strong 
you actually see the alts go into the negative because people are panic dumping them for Bitcoin. We haven't seen that for a long time. Now we see more like the alts go up, but they're just not going up as much as Bitcoin. So that could be, that's more likely what we're going to see um, going forward. But again, who knows? The alts are particularly strong this cycle for good reason. So that may not be the case. But if you're a Bitcoin holder, you're Bitcoin maxi, you're sitting pretty. Basically at 44,000, we're near our previous high of this year, 45,000. And I think we're gonna go a lot higher. I think by the end of this year, we could see Bitcoin be at six figures, $100,000, okay? That's a lot. That's a lot. That's more than double, right? A lot of people think that Bitcoin is too big. You can't make any money in it, right? But it is the surest bet in crypto. And that's because it's the greatest store value. It's the best hedge against inflation. And now you have programmable dApps and NFTs and tokens on top of Bitcoin, who knows where Bitcoin is going to be in a few years. Okay, so the, the landscape for Bitcoin is actually changing way faster than I think any of us knows or expects. So if you're a Bitcoin holder, continue on holding and accumulating DCAing, even at 44,000, even more at 50,000, 60,000, still good time to be DCAing, right? Uh, the question is, what happens once we break previous high at 69,000? Let's say Bitcoin by August is already at 70, 80, 90,000. Do you continue to DCA? I guess we'll we'll talk about that when we, you know, when we get there, right? I guess we have to measure the landscape, see where things are. If things are still as hot as as ever, then the answer is yes. But if things start cooling down, then we'll judge then. But if I had to speculate, if I had to make an educated guess right now, I would say yes, because I think 2025, we're going to see the cycle continue. I don't think we're just going to see the cycle end in 2024. That would be very unusual and really no good reason for that. All right, so that's number one. Number two relates to number one. These calisum. I was referring to spot ETS. Are they going to come? The answer is yes. There's no doubt in my mind spot ETFs are coming. Based on everything, all the coverage, all the inside leaks, and all these financial analysts and, and everyone else that's been paying attention, following the cases, and so forth, it's a hundred percent certain that we're getting spot ETFs. There are still a few people in my live stream that comment like. George, you're delusional. It's not going to come this year. No, it's delusional to think that they're not coming this year. For sure, we will get spot ETFs. And all signs point to that this coming week, yes, this week, we will get approval. Okay. Now, of course, until the SEC officially declares it, it's not official. Right, but all signs point to sometime this week, Monday, Tuesday, or either Wednesday, we will get confirmation, 100% confirmation that spot ETFs are coming and approved. And they could be trading by the end of the week or next week. So it's for sure it's coming. Now, how much money is coming in realistically and how quick? That's the question. That's the question. So back in 2017, when futures were introduced, there was a lot of speculation also that, oh, there'll be billions or trillions coming in, right? It turned out futures was not as hot as people anticipated and actually was kind of lackluster in 2017. And plus, futures arguably popped the Bitcoin bubble. So obviously when things are coming down, you're not gonna get high volume. In fact, it's proven it's proven without a shadow of doubt. If you look up Jay Clayton, who used to be the SEC chair before Gary Gensler, he said afterwards that basically they were pressured by the government to approve futures because they needed to pop the Bitcoin bubble. 
He actually said that afterwards. Okay. But whether or not that really did or because of the fact that was the tail end of the cycle, right? We don't know. We don't know if it really did or not. But my point is when futures came out, we didn't really see an explosion. Then later on, I don't know what year, we came out with futures-based ETFs, which are cash settled. So that means the fund managers that can offer these funds, everything's settled in cash. It tracks the, um, the price of Bitcoin, but they don't actually need to hold any Bitcoin, right? Volume with those derivatives are, are lackluster too, because really it's not the same. It's not the same as buying Bitcoin, right? Um, so that was kind of lackluster. So can we see a lackluster open for spot ETFs? My answer is no, I don't think so. And here's why. Again, I think timing plays a big role. If you think about it, the 2017 futures was right at the end, at the end of the four year cycle, right? And then when futures based ETFs came out, that I don't know exactly when that came out, but I, if I had to guess, I would say that's like tail end 2021, 2022, right? And again, it was towards the end either. I, I don't know for sure, but it's either at the end of the cycle or it was crypto winter already. So obviously didn't have a big effect. But this time around with SPY ETS, that's no longer the case. People know by now, people know Bitcoin's history. They know four-year cycles and they know this year is the halving a year. And the halving year is usually when Bitcoin really starts turning around, starts getting really parabolic, and it carries into 2025. So these Wall Street guys, they're not oblivious to that. They could do a Google search. They could ask ChatGPT, and they can find the answer. They know that this is a very bullish year. And the institutions that are jumping in, they also know that too. If they don't know that, these fund managers will probably educate them because... <laughs> Because uh, they're basically telling all their wealth clients and all their wealthy customers and clients and, and businesses, right? They're educating them. They're trying to get them to get in. So timing plays a big factor. And this time around, timing could not be better. Because this is the having a year. And this, right now, if it gets approved this week, is only months away from the having event. So this is how you load up before the having event, right? And again, these big boys that are coming in, they're not stupid. They know that. So most likely they're going to be loading up before the having event. And then afterwards, that's when retail FOMO takes over. I think retail FOMO will always be here. When things start skyrocketing, you're going to see droves of people come in. Because family and friends and coworkers and everyone else in between starts talking and people start buying. And that's when, you know, you see all skyrocket to the moon, right? Um, that's how XRP hit like close to $4 before. You go see retail FOMO kick in, but institutions, I believe, will start loading up immediately. Immediately with SPY ETF approvals. There'll be a lot that I'll be buying of course, there will be institutions and companies that will come in late. They'll buy later in 2024 and into 2025. FASB changes the counter rules for holding Bitcoin also at the end of this year. So that also plays a major factor. But yeah, I just don't think there'll be a last lackluster launch. I think we're going to see volume come in right away. Maybe not like week one or week two, but but by the end of the first month or second month, we're going to see substantial volume in the billions. And that's only going to climb. So, yeah. And is this a bubble popper, if you're wondering? No, there's no way. Because, of, again, the timing. Because the having event. Because everything else, everything else that's coming up. I mean, the U.S. economy is going to get stronger because of rate cuts that's coming probably in June or July. Um, you got a presidential election, you have other factors like X coming out their crypto payment platform, um, SEC losing more cases against Coinbase and Ripple, 
Um, Ethereum SPY ETFs. I mean, they're just, there are so many catalysts. This year is just going to be absolutely fantastic. So I'm looking forward to it. I think SPY ETFs will go change the game and we're going to see so much money flow in and it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop. And once, here's the kicker, once these institutions come in and they hold on to their Bitcoin or they hold on to their ETFs, are they really go time it like retail investors and sell at the end of 2025? There's no guarantees of that. So then that means, are we really going to fall after 2025? I don't know. Maybe it becomes an extended cycle. Maybe it becomes a super cycle. You know, I don't, I don't actually know, um, but I could speculate and maybe they won't sell. And if there's so many people holding, then it's going to be fantastic. All right. Last thing I want to talk about are alts. I did talk about retail FOMO, right? Retail FOMO always comes in every single cycle. But like I said, there'll be times where Bitcoin, Bitcoin dominance will just lead the way. And I've been, I've been hinting that recently. It's not guaranteed, but I guess we'll see after SPY ETF approvals. We'll see what happens. But I think there may be a good chance where Bitcoin dominance continues to go up from here. So the alt may not bleed, but they will become stagnant and they won't go up like the last few months, like what we're used to, right? Because all the money is flowing to Bitcoin. I may be wrong on that. This might not be like that at all, but if it happens, don't be surprised. Okay, don't be surprised. Every cycle is always like this. Bitcoin leads the way for a while, then retail FOMO hits and the alts start pumping. That's why in terms of portfolio, I always advise new people coming into the space. Hey, you got to be diversified, but don't ignore Bitcoin. There are so many people that have zero Bitcoin in their portfolio. Some just hold memes only, like Sheep or Doge or Pepe or Bonk. Some hold a lot of memes and alts, and they say, I'm just not going to hold on to Bitcoin, right? Uh, that works during the parabolic phases, the FOMO phases, it does not work traditionally in most of the years of a four year cycle because in crypto winter, Bitcoin falls the least and it does recover uh, really well. Like right now, Bitcoin is only, I think it was like 30%, 30 something percent away from previous high. But a lot of the alts, they're still 60, 70, 80%, right? So Bitcoin has been leading the way. Despite the fact it seems like the alts have done really well, they're still way more off their previous high than Bitcoin. So think about that, right? But does that mean that you should be discouraged and you should just sell everything off and, and load up on Bitcoin only? No, no, that's not what it means at all. If you have no Bitcoin in your portfolio, well, you might want to think about that. Adding Bitcoin to your portfolio, nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. It gives you stability, it gives you growth, and more importantly, uh, it doesn't make you kind of, it doesn't make you depressed about your portfolio when you see Bitcoin rise and everything else you're holding does not, right? So psychologically it also helps with that too. Uh, it helps you prevent from making mistakes of trying to tr trade too much and so forth, right? So. Uh, my advice is if you don't have any Bitcoin in your portfolio, you should add some. Um, but if you're holding a lot of vaults, does not mean you should sell them. Continue the course, hold all and DCA. If they take a substantial dip, good buying opportunity. I don't think that ends. I just think that everyone needs to realize that Bitcoin cannot be ignored. Bitcoin is the big daddy. It's not going to go anywhere. And the future is very bright, especially with ordinals, with inscriptions, with dApps that's being made on top of stacks. You don't want to miss out on Bitcoin. That's for sure, right? So again, alts may get weaker, may, quotes, um, doesn't mean necessarily will. 
But I think there's a good chance of that with all the money flowing in because of spot ETFs and because of the having that's right around the corner. So just be, be mindful of those two events. They, they are absolutely huge for Bitcoin. All right, that is pretty much it. The final note, just something side note is, uh, this is obviously on my CryptoZeros Plus channel, right? Um, I'm still very serious. One of my goals is to grow this channel. So that's why I decided to move this Sunday walk video to CryptoZeros Plus. So obviously if you're watching this, or you're on this channel for the first time, hit that subscribe button. Also, uh, today was the very first video from Noah, who is a team member. He knows his TA, people enjoyed his first video, so make sure you watch that and subscribe for him, but also for Grady and for Josh and for all the new hosts that will be on this channel, so make sure you subscribe. All right, that's pretty much it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow, bright and early, 8.30 a.m., and we will see if we get that spot Bitcoin approval tomorrow. Smash up the like, subscribe to the channel. Have a good Sunday. Take care. Bye-bye.